Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. This video has been a video that I've been waiting to make for a while. Thankfully, we have finally gotten to a point where that is possible with a utility that works very seamlessly. It's not super awesome. Uh, there, we don't have a bunch of profiles that we can set. There is a profile that you can make, which is useful and worthwhile, at least with regard to undervolting. Uh, and I will basically show you how to set that up. I want you to take a look at this Heaven benchmark right now. If you look right up here, you can see that the package power is running at 14 watt. We're at 14 watt right there. But you can see right here the PL packet, uh, PL1 power limit is set to 35 watt. This is what I have right now set in the BIOS, 35 watts. However, you can clearly see that it is not caring about that at all, and we are indeed running at 13 watt. I am not connected to any battery um, uh, mains at all. This is running entirely off a of battery right now. The purpose for that is that you can see the total system power right there. Right now we're using 22 watts. I am including that there just so that you can, uh, for in, in fact, see that we are not using 35 watt at all. So knowing that, now let's take a look at the FPS. You can see the FPS average is 52.3 and our score is 1317. Right now I am forcing a TDP of 15 watt. So if we go ahead and we don't have to... Tab. We don't have to exit that. We can keep that running. The utility that we're going to be using is called Quick CPU. Um, thank you very much to Cypher A. He is the one that sent this to me on Discord. If it wasn't for Cypher A, I wouldn't be showing you this video right now. So all credit goes to Cypher A for finding this application. He linked it to me and I told him that I'd take a look at it and it does exactly what we needed to do. So what you're going to want to do is after you run Quick CPU, you're going to want to go straight into performance control with Speed Shift. This you don't really have to worry about so much. Uh, if we go ahead and jump into general, this right here is where you're going to be setting your TDP settings. You can see that this is 15 watt right now. So if I go ahead and set this to 20 watt, uh, not 29 watt. Sorry, I'm like looking over this. It'll set that to 20 watt, and I'll set this to 20 watt. And we'll click apply here. Okay, that's applied. Go ahead and close that. Now if we go back to the benchmark running, we should see the CPU package power start jumping up to 20 watt, and indeed we do. So you can see that it is basically 17.3 watt, 18.6 watt. See if it, there we go, we're getting close to it, right there. So now we are at 20 watt, 19.9, perfect, right? This is exactly what we're looking to do. We just set the TDP in real time, in Windows, in an application, without having to go to the BIOS to set it how we want. Perfect, right? Great. Now we have a method of controlling the TDP through an application alone. This is what we were looking for. This is a tool that we were uh, hoping to get. People should be familiar with this because there was a tool on the Win2 called Intel, Intel XTU. That was a tool made by Intel. We don't have that yet because Intel does not have any Ice Lake desktop chips. Until that happens, there is not going to be an Intel XTU. However, this program is working exactly as we need it. Um, and far easier than throttle stop without any kind of weird things that kind of happen and don't happen. This seems to more or less just work as it's supposed to. So you can see that we went to 20 watt right there. I am going to go back to 15 watt here. So let me go back into advanced CPU settings. We're going to go to general and I'm going to set this back to 15 watt because you saw that frame rate that we had before was like 52, right? 52 average FPS. So I'm going to go back down to 15 watt. Okay, we're going to close this. I'm going to jump back into heaven. Now we should see the CPU package power once again stop at 15 watt. And we're about 13.6. You can see total system power is at 20 watt. Right now, we would get about three hours worth of battery life uh, with this. TDP setting. So if we set this to 15 watt, right now this the total system power, the entire package is 21 watt. This is a, around three hours of battery life, which is pretty good. That's like, you know, I want to say fantastic, but it is switch level, you know, old switch level, not new switch level. New switch level is like five hours. This is old switch level of battery power. Now I'm going to go ahead and benchmark this once again. Now the only thing is we're doing this with no undervolt. I'm going to show you again what the benchmark is on this, and then we're going to undervolt it like crazy, and then benchmark it again, and stay at the same TDP. We're going to stay at the same 15 watt TDP. We're just going to undervolt it like madmen, 
and get better performance. And why we're getting better performance by undervolting is we are improving, we are forcefully improving the performance per watt, okay? It sounds counterintuitive to say how does undervolting increase performance? How does giving less improve performance? And what we are doing is we are demanding more performance for our watt dollar. Um, I've I've been long thinking about trying to like make a separate video on why undervolting um, improves performance because it's counterintuitive to a lot of people. Um, unless you understand exactly what's going on, uh, you know, people always can, you know, especially for GPUs, you would overvolt a GPU. You would overvolt a CPU if you want to hit higher frequencies. We're not trying to hit higher frequencies. We're trying to, we can't hit higher frequencies. We don't have an unlocked chip. We have the frequencies that we have. What we're trying to do is pay less to get to those frequencies, and that's what undervolting does. We are forcefully improving the performance per watt. I'm going to go ahead and uh, skip ahead of this just so that we don't have to sit, sit through all 26 different iterations of this. We're going to get a lock again on the performance. You saw the performance in the beginning of the, this video. We're going to see another benchmark at 15 watt uh, default voltage settings. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take a look at that, and then I'm going to undervolt like a madman, and then we're going to benchmark again. All right, so that finished. Again, we have rather similar benchmarks here. So we are looking at 53.3 average FPS. I'm just going to say 53 FPS and a score of 1344. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and alt tab out of here. And we're going to go jump back into advanced CPU settings. Now we're going to go into Fiverr control. Here is where the secret sauce happens now. A lot of people, you know, negative 70 millivolt for the Win 2 was like a high undervolt. Well, I should say a low undervolt. Uh, it was typically like a max setting. I am right now doing 100, um, negative 100 millivolt. And it's important to do negative uh, voltage here, guys. Please do not increase voltage here. Increasing voltage will be pushing more energy into the chip. It'll be extremely wasteful. And you could actually damage something by pushing too much voltage into the chip. It's not wise at all. Uh, this is also, you can see right here, voltage mode, it, uh, voltage mode is adaptive. If you make this static, static is uh, very, very aggressive. Uh, basically adaptive, there's kind of a bargaining that's happening. The chip is like, hey, I'll give you maybe negative 50 millivolts, maybe I'll give you negative 60 millivolts to get the frequency uh, that you want. When you do static, you're saying, no, I'm only going to pay this much voltage for that frequency or else. And the or else will be the machine will, you know, you'll get a blue screen of death. <laughs> so uh, static, you'll be able to only hit very small, so you'll be, like, be able to do maybe negative 10 millivolts static voltage mode. Uh, typically, I like to do adaptive. Um, it's a lot more forgiving, a lot more generous in terms of uh, play and swing. So try to always keep adaptive. Static will cause a lot more instability. Um, you really have to fine tune that. Uh, GPU on slice, you're never going to do. And then this is the last one. So we're doing it on uh, all four of these settings right here. Go ahead and apply. Okay. So now these are the four. So we have the uncore voltage GPU core, uh, core the GPU slice uh, voltage, the CPU cache voltage, and the IA core uh, voltage. All of these, these four, we're doing negative 100 millivolts. I am only doing this on this DirectX uh, 11 benchmark. Uh, it is wise to test this across a bunch of different applications because just because I'm hitting a neg uh, negative 100 of uh, negative 100 millivolts right here does not mean that it will work across everything. You do need to test this across a lot of different stuff. So right here you can see um, the profile part of it. If you just go ahead and just click all of these, this is the most that we'll have. So if you say add to profile, this you can see just gets updated right here. And then you can say apply to um, the Fiverr stuff on startup. This would basically just make it so that when you start quick CPU that these voltages would just automatically kick in, which is nice, but then you know you still have to mess with TDP in here. There's no instant setting that we can do, and I'm not even sure if there's a method for us to write batch files against this application. That's something that I'll take a look at later. Right now, we're just going to use the GUI alone. We have gone ahead and done 100, uh, negative 100 millivolt 
for all four of these settings. They are all there and applied. I'm going to go ahead and close now and we are going to run this benchmark one more time. Once again, you can see that we are, I'm going to go ahead and close this. So 53.3, 13.44. I'm going to go ahead and click bench again. Very important, take a look at this TDP. I didn't change it, we're still 15 watt here, okay? I'm going to let this run for a minute. I'm not going to really say anything. I'm just going to let you know that you know this is 15 watt. I'm not changing this to boost the numbers. We are going to get better performance just by undervolting pretty aggressively alone. Um, for what it's worth, I have tried undervolting a little bit higher than this, um, a little bit, a little bit lower than this. I went to a hundred, uh, negative 125 millivolt, and I almost, I pretty much instantly blue screened. So um, a negative, negative 100 millivolt is pretty much my basement in terms of undervolting. I've not been able to get less than that. That is pretty extreme to me, and I'm pretty excited that it's working at all. Um, but this does mean this is like exactly what we were looking for, guys. This is going to allow us to have our cake and eat it too. We are going to be able to get uh, basically force better performance per watt. Now this, again, is only a DirectX 11 test. When you are doing these tests yourself and you're trying to figure out what your chip is capable of, now remember, every chip is different. It is called a silicon lottery on purpose. This goes both ways for you know overclocking and for undervolting. Um, they're not every chip is made the same. Things get binned differently. My particular chip in here right now seems to be stable at a, a negative 100 millivolt across all four of those. That is super aggressive. I am happy that it's working right now. But I again, if I run this in Vulkan, DirectX 12, DirectX 9, I may crash an application at this extreme undervolt. Just because it's working in DirectX 11 does not mean it will work across the board. OpenGL, DirectX 12, Vulkan. You will have to test these yourself. You will not get the same results as me. You might have to have less of them um, or more in this case. So maybe you hit negative 60 millivolt, negative 70 millivolt. Uh, and maybe it's different across those different. Maybe it's just the GPU slice. Maybe it's just the IA core. Um, you're going to have to find out and determine what is the best for your system do tests and find stability yourself. The good news is that, again, you can still see that we're 15 watt here. Um, we're able to change the TDP in real time within Windows without jumping back to the BIOS, and we are able to undervolt as well. We're a little bit more than halfway through this benchmark. I just wanted to kind of talk through this just so you can see, again, this TDP has been locked at 15 watts. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, skip ahead so that we can see the end of this benchmark again 53.3 average fps 1300 score we're going to see what we get afterwards so it's basically right after i skip after this and there we are 61.5 average fps a score of 1548 and again same tdp just extreme undervolting this is a fantastic improvement um, we're basically we're just forcing better performance. Um, at the one now that I know this, I'm going to try to play around with it. Right now, if you wanted to do 15 watt, that's this is a pretty good score for 15 watt. I kind of want to see what we would get at 20 watt. I almost have a feeling that with this extreme undervolt at 20 watt, I will basically be where 25 watt would be. So I might be able to just shave five watts out of this, which is pretty huge. Um, five watts is going to be I mean, you, you, see, you say 5 watts. Well, what's 5 watts? 5 watts is going to amount to maybe another 30 minutes of battery life. Um, that's, you know, that's how huge that is. Right now, we're getting around 3 hours of battery life at 15 watt TDP. At 20 watt, maybe we're going to probably get closer to, a, you know, a solid 2 hours. Um, but yeah, I'm super happy and excited about this. What did we get? We went, 50, we went from 53.3 to 61. That's uh, 10... Uh, was 15 percent a 15 percent uh improvement 15 percent better performance 16 17 percent better performance um and the same tdp that's fantastic that is super awesome uh again thank you so much cypher for recommending me recommending this app to me this is exactly what we were all looking for i'm going to have the application in the description field so feel free to go ahead and download it again it's called quick cpu you'll see the the link for it there um yeah it works just as advertised super simple and easy straight through the gui 
Um, this doesn't actually, you can see I was playing around here, I was trying to change the core settings across all four cores to use 3.8 gigahertz. Obviously that does not work. It kind of, you know, we're, we can't overclock the chip. It's just going to do what it does. I'm still playing around with this and I'm trying to figure out what I can do. Hopefully we can actually set some things up uh, with batch settings. Um, I, I don't know. It's it's super awesome. Um, that's it. As always, guys, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. This is exactly what we were looking for. I will kind of follow up. Follow me on the Discord and stuff. I'm going to try to test out some 20 watt um, undervolted versus 25 watt not undervolted, you know, just default voltage and see where it lands me. But uh, yeah, I'm super stoked and happy. This is exactly what we all wanted. As always, guys, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.